In this video, I will show you how to use the TMP36 temperature sensor with an Arduino. You can see here I have the Arduino program to control these LEDs and light up more of them as the sensor warms up when I pinch it with my fingers. When I let go again, the sensor will start to cool down and the LEDs will progressively turn back off. Let's start by talking about how the sensor works. This is an analog temperature sensor, meaning it converts temperature to a voltage. That voltage can be read by one of the Arduino's analog input pins, but it can also be read by a multimeter like I have here set to measure millivolts. So it is currently displaying 744, 745 millivolts, and we will again see when I pinch the sensor, not only will more LEDs start to light up, but this voltage reading will increase. So as we will see later in the video, the code running on the Arduino is taking this voltage and converting it to a temperature either in degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit. You can then use that temperature to do different things like set thresholds in your code to turn LEDs on and off. If we zoom in on the sensor, and I have removed the LEDs from the circuit for now to make things a little easier to see, we see that it has three pins, and if we look at the sensor from the top, we see it has this semicircle or rounded shape where there's a round side and then a flat side with some writing on the front that can be kind of hard to see unless you get the light to reflect off it at exactly the right angles. So there you go. You might be able to zoom in or pause your video and see the TMP36 part number on the front there. So that is something to watch out for if you buy an Arduino kit or if you have accumulated a bunch of parts. These look pretty much identical to transistors, which are another common part in Arduino projects. They have the exact same physical package with that black semicircular shape and the three pins, but the writing on the front will be different. So if you do get your parts mixed up and you can't tell them apart, you're going to need to get a magnifying glass or again, tilt things around to get the light to reflect off of it at exactly the right angle so you can see the writing and figure out what part you have. In the case of the TMP36, we have three pins. So with the flat side with the writing facing me, I have pin one on the left, which is power, pin two in the middle, which is the analog output signal, and pin three on the right, which is ground. So let's switch over to the computer, take a look at the circuit diagram and the code for using the sensor. Here we have the wiring diagram for this circuit. I have the LEDs connected to four of the Arduino's digital pins with current limiting resistors. This is pretty standard, so I'm not gonna go over it in this video, but if you are new to Arduino, we have an entire Arduino tutorial series as a playlist linked in the description of this video, so you can go back to the earlier videos in this series to learn about controlling LEDs. In this video, we are going to focus more on the wiring for the sensor. So here we have the sensor, which again has three pins. If the side with the writing is facing you, those are going to be pins one, two, and three from left to right. Although with the sensor rotated 90 degrees in the breadboard here, that goes one, two, three from top to bottom. So the first thing to remember when using a sensor like this in a breadboard is that each hole in a half row of the breadboard is electrically connected to the other holes as shown by the green highlighting here in this program called Tinkercad, which is an online Arduino simulation and circuit building program. We have another tutorial about that in our Arduino playlist. Anyway, remember that those holes are connected. So when you put a sensor like this in the breadboard, each pin needs to be in its own row. Do not do this or all three pins will be shorted together in that row and the sensor will not work. So make sure all three pins are in a separate row on the breadboard. Next up, we have the sensor connections. Now we are not gonna go into a ton of detail on it in this video. If you really wanna get into the weeds, you can read about this more in the Arduino forums, but this sensor is pretty susceptible to electrical noise and things like fluctuation in the Arduino's power supply voltage. So. If you quickly Google a tutorial for this sensor, it might tell you to connect to the five volt pin on the Arduino to power it. But especially when you are driving additional things with the Arduino, like LEDs or motors, that voltage can actually fluctuate a lot and then that can mess up your temperature reading. So we are going to power the sensor with the 3.3 volt pin instead, which is a little more stable. We are also going to connect the sensor directly to its own ground pin on the Arduino instead of connecting it to the breadboard ground because again, that can help isolate some of the noise and give you a slightly more stable reading. So we have 
pin one here, the power pin, connected to 3.3 volts, pin three, the ground pin, connected directly to a ground pin on the Arduino without using the breadboard, and pin two, the middle pin or the output voltage, connected to one of the Arduino's analog input pins. Next up, let's take a look at the code. If you want to copy and paste this code, you can access this Tinkercad simulation from the link in the video description. So first we declare some variables. We have a variable for the sensor pin, one for the sensor reading, and then we are going to convert that ADC, or analog to digital converter value, which is going to give us a number between zero and 1023, to first volts, then millivolts, then degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. We have variables for the LED pins, and we have threshold variables for the different temperatures at which we are going to turn those LEDs on. I am based in the US, so we usually use Fahrenheit for measurements, but you could convert these to Celsius instead if you are more used to Celsius. Next up, we have a variable for our analog reference voltage, and this is another one of those things that helps give us a more stable sensor reading. So again, some of the simple tutorials for this sensor online might just have you connected directly to five volts and use the analog read command, which by default uses the Arduino's five volts as a reference. But again, if that voltage fluctuates because you have external things connected to the Arduino or you don't have the world's most perfect power supply, that is going to mess up the readings you get with analog read and in turn mess up your temperature readings. So the Arduino has an internal reference voltage that is nominally 1.1 volts that is more stable, but you can use a multimeter on your physical Arduino to measure the exact voltage you are getting and enter that number here to help calibrate your temperature readings. In our setup function, we then set the LED pins as outputs. We use the analog reference command to tell the Arduino that we are using that internal 1.1 volt reference voltage instead of the default 5 volts. Again, this line is important. If you forget that, your sensor readings are going to rely on the 5 volts, which can fluctuate and mess up your readings. And we initialize serial communication. In our loop function, we use the analog read command to read the sensor pin, and then we are going to convert that first to voltage. So remember, analog read gives you a number between zero and 1023, but in order to convert that ultimately to a temperature, we need to convert it back to a voltage. So voltage is what I showed you on my multimeter earlier but the Arduino does not measure voltage directly. It uses an analog to digital converter that converts it to a digital numbers. So that's what this equation here is doing. It is converting that ADC reading to a voltage, and then I am multiplying that by a thousand to convert it to millivolts. Then to explain the conversion to temperature, we are going to briefly switch over to the sensors data sheet. If you have never seen the datasheet for an electronic part before, these can be a little intimidating because there is a lot of information, but don't worry because you don't really need most of it if you just want to use the part with an Arduino. One of the most important things you can look for is the pinout or a diagram that shows you which pin is which. So again, we can see that here with that half rounded shape of the plastic package, bottom view, pin one is power, pin two is the output voltage and pin three is ground. I went over that earlier in the video, but if you ever have a part and you don't know what the pin connections are, you can look that up in the data sheet. The other thing we want here, if we scroll through the data sheet, is the graph that's going to show us the relationship between voltage and temperature. So we can see that graph here, figure six, output voltage versus temperature. And if we zoom in a bit more on that graph, we see there are actually three different lines because there are three similar models of this sensor. There's the TMP36, which we have, and the TMP35 and TMP37. And we see that all of these sensors are linear, meaning they have a straight line graph that converts between temperature and voltage, but they have different slopes and intercepts. So you can use the equation of this line to convert from voltage to temperature or vice versa. So you can either calculate the slope and intercept of these lines by looking at the graph here and figuring that out yourself or scrolling up to the table of data in the data sheet where you have the scale factor, which is the slope 
for that particular sensor. So not gonna go over that in this video. You can just take my word for it when we go back to the code. And assuming you have the TMP36, you can use the same equation I am using. But if you have a different sensor, you would need to go to the data sheet and look up the slope and intercept for that sensor. So switching back over to the code, that is where this equation comes from. It is taking the equation of the line in that graph from the data sheet to convert the voltage to temperature in degrees Celsius. We then have another equation to convert that to degrees Fahrenheit, which again, you can skip if you just wanna use Celsius, but since I am based in the US and many people here use Fahrenheit, I have included that as well. Finally, I then have a series of if statements to compare that temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, but you could change this to Celsius depending on your preference, to the different threshold variables that I defined earlier in the code. So if the temperature is above the highest threshold, I'm going to turn all of the LEDs on, else if it's above the next highest threshold, I'm only going to turn three of the LEDs on, and so on. Then finally, for debugging purposes, I have a bunch of serial print statements that print out all of the numbers that I've done calculations with. So we have the original ADC reading, the voltage in volts, the voltage in millivolts, and then the temperature in degrees C and the temperature in Fahrenheit. If we start the simulation here in Tinkercad, we'll see that I cannot pinch my fingers around this sensor to warm it up, but you can click on the sensor in Tinkercad and it gives you a slider bar that lets you control the simulated temperature. So Right now it's here at 25 degrees C according to the simulation. Not totally sure exactly how Tinkercad is simulating everything with the analog reference voltage, which again, I have set to what I measured on my physical Arduino here instead of the exact 1.1 volts. So you see that the reported temperature based on the calculations is a little off, but we're not too worried about that since this is a simulation. What you would really, really care about is what's going on with your physical Arduino, and you could use an external thermometer to calibrate it and tweak this value if you needed to, but not gonna go over that in this video. I'm just gonna demonstrate the basics of how this works when I move this slider, and I have it set to a pretty narrow range for the changes there, but we see as I slide it up and the temperature increases, which is simulating me pinching my finger. Maybe I'll zoom in here and get a little better control simulating me pinching my fingers around and warming the sensor up. And then the LEDs are going to light up. And then if I were to let go and have the sensor cool back down, there we go. If I do it nice and slow, you can see how those LEDs turn off progressively. So to demonstrate that better with the simulation in Tinkercad, I could move these thresholds farther apart and then the slider would not be quite as sensitive, but I had these numbers in there based on the readings I was getting with the physical Arduino and pinching it with my fingers. So there you go. Again, these are maybe not the most accurate sensor in the world if you really need to accurately measure temperature for your project, but they are cheap and widely available and included in many beginner Arduino kits. So we wanted to have our own tutorial if you wanted to use one for your science project. If you are looking for more Arduino tutorials or science projects you can do with an Arduino, again, please check out the link in the description and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.